Hello and welcome to learntocreategames.com. Today we will have a look at character animation. So let's get started. Okay, so now you can see that my model is still there on the left hand side. I could reuse it if I wanted to to export for a different type of animation. So again here if I select it and look for other animations. I should be able to find any animation that I need for this particular character. So again here I've selected the running animation again. And again I'm going to view for download. And do the same as, as I did for the previous animation, which means that I will queue it for download again. So it is, that is sorry, so that it is available for download. Again, select the format, which is FBX for Unity, and then just queue for download. Okay, so once this is done, I can also download this particular animation by clicking on the button called download. Okay, so again I can I can download it. For some reason, it has been downloaded as a zip file, and I assume it's because um, I said that I wanted to add it to the to the pack as opposed to add it to my assets earlier on. So once this is done, I can start to think about reusing these different animations. So um, the first thing I will do is go to the folder where I've downloaded these animations, and then what I will do is just import them inside Unity. So again, here I've got one animation called Fuse Model, you know, Dancing, and the other one is a zip file. So again, what I will do is take uh, the, the two models. So again, I've unzipped uh, the first file, and it actually gave me um, another animation. So again, I've got two animations, one called uh, Dancing, and the other one is, I think, Run uh, in Place. Okay, so it's going to take a few seconds, and after that, these two animations should be available in Unity. So again, I created a special folder for those. Uh, it's called Fuse, and again, they should be appearing now in this folder. So you can see that uh, the assets are being imported. And when this is complete, these two files should be available within Unity. Okay, again, you can fix now. So again, this uh, is just to uh, fix the normal map. So again, fix now. And once this is done, you can see two prefabs. Okay, so one for the hip hop dancing. So if you click on the arrow just um, on to the left of this prefab and look for um, this particular, so the gray uh, rectangle with a white triangle, you can see the hip hop animation. So this is called an animation clip. Okay, so again, you can see that this character is animated properly. All right, and now if I do the same for the other one, unfortunately, it won't work and assume that it either didn't download properly or that um, I didn't wait for the process to be complete before I downloaded it. So again, we'll try to import a different animation later on, but at least the first animation is actually working. Okay, so what we'll do now is quite simple. We will try to create a finished state machine, and in this finished state machine, we will use this animation that we have created and get them to um, basically to use the animations. So again, I'm going to create a ground. This ground is basically a box, and this box will be rescaled on the X and Z axis by 100. Then I just drag and drop my character. So if you look at this character, you see if I play the scene, look at the character. Um, just we're going to wait for a few seconds. I'll just um, focus on the character just to let you know uh, what it does. So again, if you do the same and start to zoom in on the character, so again, I'm going to press Shift and F to focus on this character. Uh, at the moment, it's not doing much. It's not animated. So it's in the first frame of the animation, right? So again, there is no animation yet. So what we need to do is possibly to include it uh, in what is called a finished state machine. So you should see on the right hand side here, there is something called animator. So again, it has this object as uh, the 
the possibility to be animated, but there is no uh, animator controller uh, connected to it, which means that we are not controlling the animation yet. So now the idea really is to create an animator controller, as we've done, and the name is my controller. Okay, so again, this will be used to control the animation. So my controller is an animator is an animator controller, and basically what it consists of is a finite state machine. So again, a, a series of states, so the different states I can be using. So again, I'm going to create a first state, uh, a first uh, uh, state called dance, sorry, and in this state I will drag and drop the, the clip called hip hop dancing. Okay, so again, it just means that whenever I enter my finite state machine, it will go straight to the dance state. And in this dance state, I will just use the animation for the hip hop dancing. So if I play my scene right now, we should be pretty much okay to go. So again, if I play my scene, it should be animated. And again, before that, sorry, I need to take my controller and drag and drop it to the controller section of the animator. It is a component of the character that we have imported. So again, the character as a, uh, a controller, and this uh, animator controller, I suppose, will be used to control the animation. So again, if I play the scene now, you should see my character um, doing a bit of uh, break dancing. Okay, so that seems to work perfectly. The only thing is that my character now is just stopping after the first time it does the animation. So what I really need to do is to loop my animation. So what I will do is edit my clip called Hip Hop Dancing. So again, I will just select this. So click once on this um, particular uh, animation and then click on the edit button. And once I scroll down, I should be able to change what is called the loop time. So again, loop time, which will just mean that it will be looping uh, indefinitely. So click apply, that will just change your uh, animation. And now again, if I play the scene, this animation should be playing indefinitely. So again, looping again, because we have modified the attribute of this animation. So again, it will actually um, do the break dancing, but just it won't stop. It will skip, it will keep doing that. Okay, so again, it seems to be working quite well in this example. The break dancing is going quite fine, it's looping, which is great. So now what I'd like to show you is possibly how to add a different animation and transition between those two. So again, what I will do is quite simply to go back to my assets, select the exact same character, so this could be the one on the left hand side, and then uh, find a different um, animation. So again, we're going to look for an idle animation, so an, uh, an animation to be played when my character is idle, when he's not doing anything. So again, I'm going to look for idle, so again, I'm going to type idle here, and then it should, it should come up with a lot of different animations, and uh, it will be just for me to choose which one I want to be applied to my character. So again, I'm going to look at this animation here, the idle, so top in the middle for top row, sorry, and uh, the second one in the top row. On the right hand side, you should see your character with the animation idle, so that seems to work perfectly. Again, I will add it to my assets, and once this is done, again, make sure it is uh, added to the queue so that I can download it. So again, view for download, or view or download. So when I click on that, again, you should be able to queue for download as well. Okay, so again, the button queue download in the middle of the screen, at the top. Uh, yeah, at the top of the screen. So again, if I click on queue download, we should be able to uh, download this particular animation. So again, I'm going to choose, as I've done before, the FBX for Unity, and then click on Queue Download, which means that it will be queued for download, and it will be available so that I can import it into on my computer and then in Unity. So again, here, I just need to click on the Download button for this particular animation. And again, as uh, for before, I will save this file, it will ask me where I want to save it, so again I'm going to save it on my desktop, exact, in the exact same folder as the other animations. You can see again that this file is, is named fuse model arrow, uh, at and then idle, which means that it's the idle animation applied to the model called um, fuse model. So again, in my case here, I'm going to import um, this particular animation, so the fuse model at idle.fbx, so drag and drop it on uh, Unity. And once this is done, again, it's going to take a little while because uh, it's importing the assets there. So once this is done, it should appear again in the folder called Fuse. 
So again, it should be imported. So I'm going to try again. So drag and drop. Perfect. So now again, it should be importing. Okay, so after the drag and drop here, we could use the plus sign. So again, it just means that it has understood that I wanted to import this asset. So again, this asset is imported. And then the idea will be to create another state and try to create transitions between them. Okay, so once it has been imported again, uh, what we will do is go back to our animator window and try to create a new state with this animation. So again, if I click on my controller and again, I change the window. So again, I'm going to close this window, go back to the animator window here. So again, I've got my, uh, my state called dance. I'm going to create a brand new state. So you need to right click on the canvas and then change the name of this state. So again, it's going to be idle. Now, I'd like this uh, state, I suppose, to be rich whenever the game starts. So again, what I will do is change the, the, the state that I had initially called dance to idle and then change your corresponding clip as well. Okay, so again, I'm going to call this, type, this uh, state idle, done. And the other one will be called dance. I'm just um, permuting them so that I can actually get into this stage right away. So again, this is called idle. And the animation on this should be idle. So again, I'm going to do as before. I'm going to click on this uh, model and look at or take the animation called idle. So again, back to the animation window, take this clipped and drag and drop it onto the motion uh, field. When this is done, again, for the dance um, clip, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Okay, so again, uh, yes, I'm going to take the clip called Hip Hop Dancing and drag it to the motion. Okay, so now I've got two states, a state called Idle and a state called Dance. The state called Idle is associated with the Idle animation and the state called Dance is associated, is associated with the Dance animation. Again, what I will do as well is make sure that the Idle animation is looping. So again, edit the clip, set the loop time to true and then save and apply my changes. Once this is done, I will create what are called parameters. So these parameters will be used to trigger transitions between states. So again, I'm going to create a parameter called wanna dance. It's going to be Boolean. And again, create a transition between those two states. To do so, I have to right click on the state called idle and then just click on the state called dance. It will create a transition between them. And here the condition is that wanna dance should be true. So again, if wanna dance is true, it will transition from the first state to the second state. So again, I'm just uh, rearranging my window so we can see both the uh, scene view and the animator view. And what I will do is look at my first character. So again, if you look uh, in the bottom, uh, at the bottom of the window, you will see that the idle um, state is the first state by default. So again, I need to click on this animator window here. You can see the blue lines in the other window. Now, if I modify the one dance to true, after the idle animation is, is finished, it will transition to the dance state as you can see right now. So again, it has transition between two states, one called idle and one called dance. And again, if I say it to false, nothing will happen because I haven't determined any other transitions. So again, I'm going to create another uh, variable, boolean again, and this one will mean will be one arrest. So again, it's going to be a, a boolean variable that will um, determine whether the character will go from the, the state called dance to the state called idle. So again, I'm going to click on this transition and set the condition to one rest equal to true. Okay, so again, we have two Boolean variables here. The first one to go from idle to dance and the second one to go from dance to idle. So when this is done, again, I'm going to display the animator window and then I will simply just set one dance to true, so it will transition, and again set one dance one arrest to true, and now it should actually start to rest again. You can see the transition here. So it's working perfectly. The only thing here is that you see these two variables, the Boolean variables here, are staying in the state in which you left them. So again, if I set one dance to true, it will stay true, and if I set one dance or one arrest to true, it will stay true. 
What I'd like to do instead is to create variables which are called triggers. So again, we're going to look at that in a few seconds. And these triggers, basically, what they do is uh, once you set them to true, they will be set to true and then go back straight away to false and the rest. So it will save you a bit of, of work. So again, I'm going to delete these two um, variables and then create suppose the, the variables with the same name but a different type that like will be called triggers so triggers are a bit like boolean values but the only difference is that their state um, will change back to their initial state once the transition has occurred so again if it's the condition or if you set it to true for instance it will go to true and go back to false so again after the transition has occurred so again we set the transition here to one arrest is true and the other one is to one when a dance is true so again if i play this scene you should see that if I play on press one dance, uh, it will say to true, which means that we will transition from idle to dance. But again, after a transition, it will be back to false again. You can see that the one dance is back to false again. Okay, and the same thing here. If I set one dance to true, it will be true bit during the transition. But then after a transition, it will go back to false again straight away. That's it. Okay, so again, those are quite important for um, events that just happen very, very quickly. So, and again, what it does, it just sets your variable back to its initial state. So that's it, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Again, if you want to know more about Unity, please check the website www.learntocreategames.com. See you. Bye.